Honorable Andre Prastana Rango, President of Centrist Democrat Internationals, esteemed leaders of IDC CDI, Excellencies, <coughs> distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. Today I'm pleased to take part in the opening of IDC CDI Executive Committee meeting. I would like to extend a warm welcome to all delegates to this historic gathering in Simrip City the center of our Angkorian civilizations, which dated back from the 9th to the 15th centuries. The Cambodian People's Party, as Vice President of IDCCDI, is truly honored to host this executive committee meeting, as well as a special forum on Youth and Peace Charter for People and the Planet, which held earlier today. <clears throat> I am also delighted that many of you will be joining the 12th General Assembly of the International Conference of ASEAN Political Parties, or ICAP, as well as the 11th Plenary Session of the IPTP later this week in Phnom Penh. Let me seize this opportunity to convey my respect and profound gratitude to Samdaya Kep Mahasena Paday Dechu Hun Sen, President of CPP and President of the Senate of Kingdom of Cambodia, for his visionary leadership in peace building reconciliation, and development in our countries. As Cambodians, we are indebted to this lifetime commitment of peace, reconciliation, and post-conflict reconstructions, which have set the foundation for the national rejuvenations and modernization of this country. Today, our world faces unprecedented challenges with geopolitical tensions, rising to height not seen for decades extension and proliferations of armed conflicts across regions with participation of indirect parties to the conflicts have diminished hopes for an early ceasefire and increased fear for a conflict of global scales. Moreover, economic polarizations, climate change, and natural disasters are threatening lives globally at an unimaginable scale. Combined these challenges have caused humanitarian and refugee crisis, and hindered economic recovery, fuel inflations, disrupting supply chains, and compromising food security and human development. This is why the theme of our meeting today is so timely and relevant as we seek to share, <coughs> seek to harness our shared responsibility to address these pressing regional and global issues. I believe that together we could be impactful advocates of peace and dialogues and cooperation that aim to accelerate our economic and social recovery toward development and prosperity. <clears throat> Cambodia, as a small state, embraces an independent foreign policy with respect to international laws, which requires that we strive to strengthen our national resilience in political security, socioeconomic, and cultural fields. Cambodia stands ready to contribute to peace across our regions. As a matter of fact, Cambodia has lost, has lost several decades to its protracted civil war. But we have managed to restore full peace for more than two decades and have achieved prosperity through economic liberalizations and reintegrations into global economy to the present days. The fact that next week Cambodia will hold be hosting the Siem Reap Angkor Summit on the Mind Free World is the testimony of how Cambodia has emerged stronger and more resilient from being merely a victim of war to becoming one of the torchbearers of peace who is globally recognized as one of the most active deminers and mine action advocates. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, we are witnessing in recent years the rise of multipolar, multi polarity in the new world order, driven in part by globalization, technological advancements, and the rise of emerging economies. Today's emerging 21st century world leader is marked by a multiplicity of actors, civilization, and cultures. In another word, it is a world of interconnectedness and interdependence. In Southeast Asia, we fully embrace these multiple civilizations, diversity, 
demands that we respect different forms of political governance and institutions, even variant of democracies. Cambodia, which was one a thriving ancient civilization connecting Asian trade routes, now seeks to be a bridge builder in modern era by enhancing our global connectivity. Under the CPP leadership, we are by along like-minded countries and political parties to support multilateralism and pluralism in political governance. Given past history, peace is the core foundation of CPP's political philosophy that seeks to build a society that is harmonious, tolerant, and inclusive, where people despite their social backgrounds and political orientation can live side by side. A society that can settle differences through talks without resorting to extremism and violent political culture. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, I recognize that IDCCDI has come a long way to become a globally recognized core community of 109 political parties from 83 countries are rooted in democratic principle. As IDCCDI's Vice President, the CPP has proudly contributed to the development and strengthening of Cambodia as a democratic country in the region. We have actively participated in various regional and global political initiatives, <coughs> using our own experience in peace building and reconciliation. As a small country, our ambition lies not in military strength, but in peacemaking. After all, we only seek to live in peace and prosper as a sovereign state with territorial integrity. The CPP, together with IDCCDI, is indeed proud to address regional challenges and advance peace-building efforts aligned with IDCCDI's core democratic values and principles. In that regard, I truly appreciate the works of the IDCCDI as they related to value of peace, freedom of reliable and accountable press, the participation of youth and women in peace and security, among other aspects. This resonates perfectly with the proposed establishment of the Universal Peace Chapter, part of which was discussed and elaborated at the special forum held this morning. I believe that we are witnessing the historical moment in modern history in that government, parliamentary, political parties, and civil society organizations from across the globe reach this common vision of having in, this place, <clears throat> in place a universal peace architecture that is open, inclusive, people-centered, and action-oriented. Moreover, it is complementary to the function of the United Nations in peace building. As such, I would like to encourage our IDCCDI global family to support and partake in this journey together. I am fully convinced that IDCCDI's unwavering commitment to this process will enable us to do to better adapt to changing geopolitical and geoeconomic circumstances, build unity in diversity, and strengthening relations with our partners based on trust and mutual respect. In these challenging times, I would like to emphasize that political parties and parliamentarians do have an indispensable role to play to advance this noble agenda. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, I'm gathering over the next few days our efforts to secure common position for ensuring worldwide security, stability, and development. I am confident that IDC, CDI can provide valuable inputs for our discussions as well as identify some policy recommendations to promote peaceful coexisting for greater interest of our people. On that positive note, allow me now to conclude my speech by wishing our IDC CDI family continued success and good health. I hope all distinguished participants have a comfortable and pleasant stay in our cultural city of Simbrip. Thank you very much.